Hey, beautiful. Welcome back once again to the Tamia Dawkins Show. If you've never seen my face before, I would love to invite you to follow me on one of my many platforms. You can catch me on the Facebook platform, on Instagram at the Lady CEO, and also on YouTube at Tamia Dawkins. I talk about all things connected to living the intentional lady life so that you can build a life in a business that I absolutely know you will love. Why? Because you build it. <laughs> and so in today's show, the Tamia Dawkins show, we're really going to be focusing on a topic that I think that I don't hear a whole lot in the entrepreneurship, you know, area or industry. I, I just don't hear about it. And it's the fact that there really is. Are you ready? no balance whatsoever in motherhood and entrepreneurship. And so I think I really wanted to talk about this topic because like I mentioned, it's something that I don't hear anything about and I'm standing in the middle of it. Now, if you don't know, I have three amazing, beautiful baby boys that are all under the age of nine years old. They are homeschooled. They were homeschooled before the pandemic. As a matter of fact, we did take a two year break, quote unquote, but they were homeschooled for two years straight, me alone, no nanny. I mean, just doing all of the things. But then at the same time, trying to build a side hustle and now full being full-time in my online business. And let me let you know that the struggle was absolutely real. Now, I think that when you jump into entrepreneurship and you begin to watch different influencers and people that have been on the platform for a while, one, you notice that there's almost like this edge of perfection that's out there. Um, and I think that it is super important that we have a voice out there that's saying, hey, there is no balance. And let me let you know that if there was balance, I would be the first one to show up to that line <laughs> to go ahead and pay for it. But what I found in being a mom for nine years and being an online business builder, I've had a boutique and a subscription box and just diving into so many different endeavors in the online space in terms of entrepreneurship and having children at the same time let you know that there really is no balance. But I think we really need to search into the fact that we need to come to terms with whether we believe personally in our lives, whether there should be a balance between motherhood and entrepreneurship or not. I think a lot of women I have found just kind of feel like, listen, you know, for men in the entrepreneurship space, like you don't hear a whole lot of men either talking about, you know, do you have to balance being a father with entrepreneurship? Though I do know in the industry that there are several fathers that do that, there still seems to be a burden on the stay at home mom or the working mom that wants to build either their side hustle or either their online business to have to have a balance and really just kind of keep it all perfect. But one thing that I've realized is that if you are dealing with perfection, then more than likely you're dealing with the twin to perfection, which is pride. And when we really get to this place where we realize that we don't have to be all the things, we don't have to do all the things, but we can totally be in this place where we are content with exactly where we stand in our life, based upon the season that we are in, we will begin to grow in ways that maybe we have never imagined. Now, another observation that I've made, which is why I think that this topic is everything, is the fact that a lot of the influencers in my industry that I follow, the gurus, a lot of them don't have children. They might be at a space of time in their life where they're really young and they decided to go ahead and go after their dreams versus you know going after family or maybe they were in relationships and it's something that just did not work out. But I noticed that there are a lot of women that are maybe millennials or maybe uh, in the bridge generation that just do not have children. Their business is literally their life. They have family. But when you're throwing children into the dynamic, I think that the component is obviously a lot different. And so from my perspective, I think that we really want balance, but you have to come to terms with once again, that it's just really not a thing. It's really not a thing. Now, what I've discovered is a thing uh, is strategy. Now, if you've been striving to have balance, like I mentioned in your business or with children, you're trying to build your online business or you're trying to build your side hustle, and you're finding that it's either that you're giving 
you know, to one a whole bunch or you're given to the other and you're just like, this is something I can't do. I want to stop you in your tracks and basically let you know once again that if you will just sit down with yourself and build a strategy, then you will find that there are several things that you have the ability to be able to complete in terms of the goals that you want to reach. It is very possible. I am letting you know that it is possible because I'm absolutely doing it. So currently, let me let y'all know all the things that I have going on. I am a wife to my husband for the past 12 years. We have three children, which I mentioned, that are all under the age of nine years old. I do not have a nanny. <laughs> and I definitely wouldn't have one because of all that's going on in the pandemic. It was something that I was thinking about because I knew I wanted to scale and pivot in my online business, you know, in terms of having the extra help. But the pandemic said otherwise. So we have to do what we have to do, right? We can't sit there and sulk about it. We can't do any of those things. We just got to keep moving forward. And so aside from that, my husband and I are in ministry for the past 12 years. I actually just got ordained at the top of the year. <laughs> so you throw ministry into that component. And then aside from that, I'm always taking different classes uh, to be able to help to enrich me and keep me ahead of the game in terms of my career, which is uh, psychology counseling or my major, should I say. And then also in terms of my industry, I always believe in making sure that I'm taking a class so that I know what is going on in terms of the industry and I don't get left behind. So those are a few things that I have going on. And let's not count the pull from my immediate family in terms of my siblings, um, that are actually not located in the same state that I'm located in. So in terms of just a woman having a lot on her plate, you're looking at her. And so what I wanted to do by telling you that is just really encouraging you that you're not out here in these streets by yourself. There are other women that have a desire to have all the things, do all the things, really reach their goals and uh, whatever it is that they're aspiring to do. And it's doable, but you just really can't go into it with this mindset of, you know, having all of your T's crossed and your I's dotted. Like it's not going to work like that, right? And so the struggle is super real <laughs> as it relates to being a wife for me. Let's put me in the hot seat as it relates to me being a mom, a boss, a CEO, like it's no joke wanting to do all these things uh, in the greatest way possible. But at the same time, just finding out at times that it's hard. It's a really hard thing to try to balance. And so I've thrown balance out the window. Okay. I don't believe in it. It is not a thing that works for me. If it works for you, then great. <laughs> but for me, it's not a thing that works. What I have found has worked for my lifestyle, for my family, for my online business, for my ministry, all of those different things is just having a strategy. Now, strategy is everything, but strategy means that you have basically sat down to put a plan in place. Now, let me let you know that if you're dealing with that um, mindset where you're trying to strive for perfection, which listen, I put my, myself in the hot seat with that too. That's an issue that I'm consistently working on, like in terms of not wanting everything to be super perfect, you know? And I think that that is something that if you're dealing with that issue that we just have to deal with over a lifetime. Like, I don't think that that gets completely better, but I do believe that you can overcome it the more that you really decide to just kind of let things be, like let the chips fall where they may <laughs> in some cases so that you can prove to yourself and to your mindset that it'll be okay. Like you don't have to do all the things all the time, like I mentioned. So when you're putting a strategy into place and you're saying to yourself that you're putting a plan into place, and I believe that there are several ways that you can put a plan into place so that you can turn, really make sure that you're executing in the ways that you want to execute. Let me let you know that I am not that lady that condones the women that feel like, oh, I just can't do it. Now I do understand and have preached the importance of knowing the season that you're in. So you heard me mention earlier that I did have a subscription box uh, company for some time. And I also did, what did I mention? It was a boutique that I had at another time. And these are all around the time when um, my kids were super small. And I just had this desire because I knew that I had that entrepreneurial 
um, uh, spirit in me. Like I knew that it was something that I wanted to do, but the season wasn't necessarily right. And long story short, I kept dreaming and dreaming and I would go ahead and create the ideas, but I couldn't maintain it because my children needed me. And so it was a super hard thing at times to, you know, have to put certain things down, but I understood that it wasn't forever. Like there was going to come a season when they would grow up and they would become super independent. And then I would have a bit more time to be able to build the things that I wanted to build. Now, I didn't completely put different things away. Some things I just did as a hobby to go ahead and satisfy that crave. And that's something that you can definitely do. Like if you have small children and you know that you cannot, I talk about this all the time because I've been through it. You cannot do the things that you want to do. Build a hobby so that you don't necessarily allow for that fire to go out, nor will you deal with, you know, feeling like you are in competition and you're not just, you're not doing anything. Being a mother and if you're a wife, it's an amazing gift from God and an amazing call to be able to do, you know, and that's enough. Like the whole day is booked just being a wife and a mom, right? So saying all that to say, I think that it was important for me personally to once again, move from that place of feeling like, you know, I, I, I don't have the things in place that I want to do in terms of my business and just moving into that space of hobbies. But then when the time was right, now being able to say, okay, I still have 50 different things on my plate. How am I going to execute so that I feel satisfied in my crave and call towards entrepreneurship? And for me, that has been once again, strategy. And so one thing that I've realized is that if you're going to put a strategy and a plan into place, you have to make sure that you lock in consistency as well. Because if you're not consistent within the strategy and the plan that you're putting into place, then you'll find that things will begin to fall off and then you'll become unsatisfied again. And then you'll deal with competition again. And then it's just like this complete spiral down because of the fact that you have not put in, put certain things into place. And we're not talking about balance, but we're talking about putting a strategic plan in place so that you can make sure that you're taking action in terms of all of the different things that you want to make sure that you're doing in your life in terms of your goals of uh, building your business, maintaining it, pivoting it, um, scaling it, whatever have you. But then at the same time, making sure that your family is not losing, you know, in your strive of entrepreneurship. Now, I know that there are some women that are like, look, okay, I raised the whole house. I was the wife that I needed to be. And I remember being there myself too. Like, look, you know, when is it going to kind of be my turn? Because when you become a parent, in some cases, some people have the opportunity or they make the choice to do certain things before they have children, which I am all for. I'm like, look, single ladies, if you have certain dreams and aspirations, even if you're watching this, if you have certain dreams and aspirations and you don't have children, you don't have a husband, this is your time to do you. Do you hear me? <laughs> Absolutely do you. Make sure that you are finishing your, your degree and get in the different certifications that you want to get so that you don't feel like you're missing out on something when the season shifts and your focus needs to be on taking care of your children and taking care of your husband or doing whatever it is that you want to do. Even though, like I mentioned, some women have the best of both worlds, but I just know from experience that it takes a bit more. So if you're there, listen, a woman that has a whole bunch of experience, do what you got to do for you. And so by the time you get to that place where you have the baby, then the business will be in place and then it won't be as hard to quote unquote balance different things because the truth be told, it is not easy, right? So really know where you stand in the season that you are currently in. Now, I'm going to give y'all a couple of strategies that are going to be totally useful. So if you do not have a journal to jot down these things, you need to stop and run and get one or either put it in your phone. Because if you're in this season, then this will definitely 100% apply. And you don't have to worry about trying to feel like, oh my goodness, I don't have balance. We're not thinking about balance. We're talking about strategy and plan in terms of motherhood and entrepreneurship. Or if you're trying to make sure that you have a side hustle, or if you're trying to build an online business, which this is one of the greatest times to do it. Uh, one of my mentors recently mentioned on her podcast uh, the fact that our country, the United States, is really built on small businesses. Everybody is online. So if you've been wanting to do a small business, 
then do what you have to do. Join Domina Entrepreneurship <laughs> Society and my upcoming membership because I'm going to be teaching you everything that you need to know to be able to build an online business that you'll absolutely love. And I'll make sure that I put a link either in the description down below or um, if this is being viewed on Facebook, I'll make sure that I put it out there so you guys can absolutely have it. Now, the first thing that you are going to do, are you ready? <laughs> are you absolutely ready? Because this is some good stuff by the ad, is that you want to make sure that you build a schedule. Now, if you are a mother, then more than likely, you probably already have a schedule. But I want you to get even more strategic about it. Um, for me, what I went ahead and did was I put together different schedules. So I have planners, which are really pretty. I think we buy them because they're gorgeous, but maybe we buy them and don't always implement in terms of utilizing them. But if you are a planner kind of person that loves the stickers, I'm saying all that because I'm not a planner type person, but I tried and sometimes I do use my planner from time to time. Um, then go ahead and, you know, implement that for me, what absolutely works aside from a planner that I, you know, dive into every now and again is the time block schedule because of the fact that it is digital, digital. I'm always on my computer. And on top of that, I can set up different reminders versus a regular paper planner. You can't necessarily do that. So I think that it is super important that you put together a time block schedule. If you don't have a Google account with a Gmail account, you definitely want to open up one so that you can have free access to Google Calendar. Now, I'll make sure that I put a link in my uh, description so that I can connect you to a video that I did do on my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, that will teach you how to be able to put together a time block schedule. It is super easy. You can put it together for everything that you're doing in terms of motherhood. Let's say you even have a feeding schedule for your baby and you want to put it in there or just, you know, different times that you need to do certain things. And so for my time block schedule, I put it together in terms of my morning routine midday routine and then my evening routine, um, as well as having the different things that need to be done in terms of my online business on there. Like you can put everything on a Google calendar. So rather than you running around <laughs> with your head, you know, feeling like it's chopped off, all you have to do is put together a schedule with reminders. And like I said, in that YouTube video, it'll walk you through that. And then you have the ability to finally feel like you have a level or a sense of consistent momentum because of the fact that different things are jotted down. Now, one thing that I want to be able to say is that you don't want to stay stuck to that schedule if the season changes. So what do I mean? I also have an updated video on my YouTube channel that talks about my, basically my updated time block schedule, whereas I redid the schedule when the season literally changed. And so what do I mean? Back in the summertime, I had the ability to work way harder because my children were not being homeschooled. My husband is home because of the pandemic. Um, he is actually no longer teaching, but he still is um, in ministry full time. So then that gave me the ability to be able to hand the kids off to him. And I really dug deep in terms of certain things that I need needed to do in the online business. And I also, I think I dropped like two different products as well. So it really worked out. But then I knew when the fall time came, I wouldn't have the ability to be able to keep that schedule because of the homeschooling. So I just shifted some stuff and I put that on my YouTube channel as well. So I'll make sure that I get that to you. So you don't have to feel like you are completely stuck to the schedule because you have the ability to be able to shift it whenever you really need to. Um, based upon the season. Number two, after you go ahead and you put together your schedule, so you're not trying to balance everything, but you are strategically putting a plan in place, then I want you to go ahead and set different goals every day. So I literally have a, a board here. I can't think, the clipboard here. And what I usually do is attach a to-do list to that clipboard, either one that I've gotten from a program that I've been in, um, in terms of a class that I took or one that I created in Canva. And you are going to literally start to set different goals for yourself in like a checklist or a to-do list um, that you can look over within that week. And so, you can have like monthly to-do lists, weekly to-do lists, daily to-do lists. I mean, whatever makes you happy in terms of to-do lists so that you can make sure that you're focusing on all of the different things that you have to get done in the day and 
you can feel like, you know, you gotten different things done, you know, in that day. And what really goes hand in hand, which is number three, is making sure that you are celebrating whatever your wins are. So if you completed a particular goal that you put into place, then you want to make sure that you're celebrating. I am totally guilty for in the past, not celebrating my wins, you know, really not enjoying the place that I was in, in terms of my accomplishments. So I really want to encourage you to celebrate your wins because when you do, you obviously have the chance to take a moment and sit with the work that you've accomplished, with the things that you have checked off of your to-do list. And you have that sense of accomplishment once again, that motivates you to want to create the new habits or to reach more goals. So you kind of, you kind of have to just completely slow down to restart. <laughs> and in order to do that, setting the goals, celebrating the wins will help you to be able to accomplish that. Now, next and lastly, you want to make sure that you're staying focused on your goals. This is the strategy. This is something that you absolutely want to do because what happens is that when we you know, are not clear about the different things that we want to reach, then we'll get to this place where we become really complacent. But aside from just focusing on your goals, you don't want to get so overwhelmed with the goals that you're trying to reach that you do not enjoy the process. And that's something that I see a lot in the industry. That's something that I've dealt with in and of myself, you know, where I in the beginning was like, oh my goodness, I have to get, you know, this membership done or I have to get this product done. And you don't enjoy the process. Entrepreneurship is a beautiful experience, especially in the time now when we're able to be entrepreneurs. Like it is a great time to be able to launch out into uh, the industry of, of entrepreneurship. So I want you to focus on your goals, but then at the same time, focusing on them to the point where you begin to get super discouraged because you feel like, oh my goodness, you know, I'm never going to reach my goal. No, you want to see your goals once again in sight, but then at the same time, you want to enjoy the process because you know what I've learned um, as the years have rolled by, it's basically, you know, if you are not careful, you'll wake up and, you know, you'll be five years in, 10 years in, and you won't even have um, any recollection or won't even have just memories, yes, of some of the different things that you've traveled through on your journey, you know, and as you scale and you grow in your business, that's what the people that are following you want to hear. They want to hear your story. They want to hear your ups and your downs, but they want to be able to grasp your experience as they're making your own, as they're making their own. And so if you are in this place where you're completely dismayed and you're not enjoying the journey, then how can you really kind of testify to people about some of the different things that you've been through uh, basically, if you're not paying attention to whatever the road is. So let that be one of the greatest things that you take away from anything that I mentioned in terms of all of the strategies. And I think that they're all important, but making sure that you focus on your goals as well as making sure that you focus on the process, I think is it should have been number one. Absolutely. And so I don't want for you to be super hard on yourself about once again, hitting the different marks in terms of motherhood or entrepreneurship, because I think that we've all learned in the season that we are going through as a world in these perilous times um, that, you know, today is today, right? But we might not necessarily have tomorrow. And so if we are able to be grateful for the progress that we are making in motherhood, progress that we are making in terms of entrepreneurship, just enjoy the journey. That's what I'm, that's all I'm trying to articulate. Enjoy the journey, the ups, the downs, the things that you do know, the things that you don't know, the things that are going on in motherhood and your family, like enjoy the journey. Because like I mentioned, somebody's going to want to hear about your testimony, you know, how you made it through the different seasons, the ups, the downs, the balancing the motherhood, quote unquote, with entrepreneurship. And truth be told, somebody absolutely needs to hear your story. So ladies, 
I want to go ahead and invite you to make sure that you join my free online club, which is called Domina Entrepreneurship Society. Domina means lady, actually in Italian. If you did not know, I thought it was so cute. <laughs> and uh, what I do in my weekly online club is I give free tips and resources to be able to help you, to teach you, to prepare you, to groom you for lady entrepreneurship. So whether you are in that state of being an aspiring lady entrepreneur that just has all these dreams and hopes to do different things in terms of entrepreneurship or whether you've just started but you're kind of stuck in terms of systems and just not knowing where to go um, or you've been among you know the entrepreneurship community for some time but you're still trying to grow you know you're in this process then Domino Entrepreneurship Society is absolutely for you. It is a community of ladies that basically want to live an intentional lady life. And I definitely want to invite you to join. I'll make sure that I put a link for that as well. And so I am always excited to be able to have the chance to share with you guys. Make sure that you check out those amazing links. I will make sure that I connect with you soon. I'll talk to you ladies later. Ciao. Thank you.